today's video we'll show how we install the recessed lighting in our second story loft. Feel free to jump ahead to any section of the video you'd like to watch first. The cost associated with having a professional do this installation is around $125 to $350 per light. Depending on how many lights you're installing, that can really affect the price of the project. Of course, this is a licensed, insured electrician. And here's the cost for my job. As I didn't have to buy any tools, I was able to keep the job under $100. Your mileage may vary depending on your situation. Um, and I also resorted to uh, pretty basic LED lights. Brands like Halo or Smart Home Lights uh, can definitely push the price up there on the lights, but generally cans are pretty inexpensive, as is the wiring. So um, you can definitely save a lot of money uh, by doing it yourself. There are really two phases to the project. The first three steps are all involved in the planning process determining the source of the power, where the lights will be located, and then verifying that the cavity and the ceiling will actually be able to house those. From there, it's just a matter of executing the rest of the project and pre project in steps four through eight. Here are the majority of the tools and parts we use for this job. Uh, first, you'll see our insulation rated can lights. These are airtight. Then Romex, this is 14.2. Here is a laser distance measurement tool really great first time using one of these uh, next we have a voltage detector to verify that electricity is turned off so we don't shock ourselves next we have some painters tape to help mark some of the locations of studs and other uh, things in the ceiling and then next we have a uh, drywall saw wire strippers and then the um, general use screwdriver uh, used for some miscellaneous tasks throughout the job and of course the LED uh, lights themselves. Had a few camera shy items, uh, mainly a ladder, stud finder, multimeter, and then some miscellaneous uh, wire fishing equipment that I used. Our original plan for tapping into the power for this project was to utilize this upside down receptacle that had its own direct line to the switch on the far right that you see here. But as you'll see in the footage later on in the video, we weren't able to make that happen, so we ended up tapping into the power going to the ceiling fan, the light portion of the ceiling fan. Another key component of the planning phase is to measure out the room so you can decide where you want the cans to be located. And with this job, I'm using a laser distance measuring tool. Um, this measures from the back of the device. I'll put the link to the product in the description of this video so you can take a look at it. I think I paid $30 on Amazon. Um, but what we're basically doing is measuring 139 inches to the back wall, then kind of plotting that on a piece of paper. Now we're going to measure the other dimension of the room. Again, simply place this on the wall, point across it. It's never a bad idea to take several measurements in different places um, across the wall, um, which we've also done here. So it looks like we're at about 172 inches this way. With the room dimensions known, we then simply did some math by dividing the room uh, to get to the point where we'd have four specific can locations. Um, and then you'll see the fan in the middle of the drawing here. Now that the room was divided, we then plotted the locations. So the bottom left light was 43 inches off the left wall and 105 inches off the front wall uh, where the computer desk is up against. So 43 and 105 are the dimensions where we want to mark uh, the center location for the can. Taking those coordinates you get on the ladder, take the laser, laser tool and place it on the ceiling and start to measure out the distance. So here we are getting 105 off of that wall and then as we turned it right at the pencil mark, uh, we got 43 inches. Once you've marked the location, the ideal location for each of the lights, you need to explore into the ceiling to see if there are going to be any obstacles in your way. You can do this first by getting a stud finder and finding where your joists run, which in my case are vertical. Then I also found out that in this location where I have penciled off a little marking in the ceiling, there's a uh, brace running perpendicular, which is causing a problem. I'm going to have to relocate this light a little bit off to the side. Because the brace is in the way, I'm going to have to move the light about four inches uh, to the side. So what we'll do to kind of test and confirm that this area is a good location, um, taking here a screwdriver and kind of poking it into the drywall uh, with a hammer. You can also use a nail. Um, but what we're really trying to do is confirm that there is nothing 
um, above the drywall, um, at least immediately above the drywall. By using this uh, screwdriver, you can kind of poke into it and kind of feel how easy it is to move up and down. Um, in areas where there's wood, it would stop, obviously, like right there, and you'd know that you're not going to be able to install the light there. So this kind of helps probe the, the area. So outside of just finding out if the um, drywall is free and clear, you actually need to go higher up. So while I was using that screwdriver to kind of poke and see, um, the reality is you really need to go higher. You can use a metal coat hanger and kind of bend it out. Um, this I think was like a tent stake that I just kind of straightened out. But as you can see, about the spot where it starts to bend at the top is the clearance. So what I'll do now is hammer this into those existing holes that I just created and verify that nothing is going to hit the top of this. If I can freely push this all the way up, then I know there's a cavity large enough for this to fit in the space. Um, this did bite me in the butt once uh, downstairs when I was working on a project. I had cut all, I'd cut five of the six holes and then on the last hole um, I cut into it and found some ductwork that was in the way. It uh, was a couple inches above the drywall so I didn't touch it and uh, detect it um, earlier on when I was just hammering in like the little screwdriver. Um, and so ultimately that's where I learned the lesson of of uh, you know testing the, the, the space at, at least to the height of, of the can. So that's what we're going to do now. And here I am testing the area. Uh, once you've identified the last hole where you can go all the way up, you can then mark your hole, draw it out, and then cut it. Using the paper template that came with the cans, uh, just place that up there with a the pencil and kind of traced around it. Um, once that was done, then you just simply get out your drywall saw and just kind of start working working your way around the circle. I like to not plunge it super deep in, uh, just to be extra safe. So you can see I'm kind of using more of the tip of the drywall saw, but I uh, just like to be as cautious as possible in case there's something up there. Well, it looks like I'm bumping into something. Um, should have been a little bit smarter when I drew the circle. I probably could have ran this up in several different places but it um, feels like some wood so what I'm going to do because I've already cut out so much of the circle is I'm going to cut this last little bit shallow obviously I'm bumping into some wood here so we can kind of investigate and see what exactly it is maybe it's not something structural that I can just chop away at and be fine um, or maybe it's something where we're going to have to move the whole light an inch or two that way but you know it's just part of the fun of this project um, Unfortunately for me, this is the end of our house right here on both sides and uh, I looked up in the attic and it just was a super tight spot. I, I didn't want to mess with it so I'll just deal with these types of situations as they rise but like I said the other three holes I think are going to be really straightforward. It's just finding out how to get this one in and then recalculating the alignment of the other three so everything's uh, equidistant. So here's that stud that we originally were trying to not install too close to. But as you can see, that is a cross beam. It's only maybe a half inch thick. So I'm going to kind of push some insulation up and out of the way and kind of explore with my hands like what's going on up here. Um, ultimately, I don't think cutting into that's very smart. What I'm probably just going to do is move the hole. So here we are tracing out where we're going to cut and move the hole about an inch um, from its current location. The holes I ended up um, having to adjust because this one had to get moved because of that wood. I ended up having to move it an inch uh, further this way. As a result, I decided to move this one an inch that way and then same thing with this had this go an inch that way and then this guy an inch that way and then of course because there is a surprise beam right there where all the blue tape is lined up I had to move this light four inches this way and because of that I then adjusted all of these four inches 
So it's not perfect, but ultimately they're all spaced correctly. I measured with my laser distance tool from the edge of each circle to that brass ring from the ceiling fan and got 53 inches on all four, which is awesome, which tells me that the ceiling fan actually is centered in the middle of the room and that my circles are located very accurately where they should be. To fish the wires, I have a combination of steel fish tape, what you see here, which works great in open spaces, but I find a stiffer pole is better for um, working with insulation. I don't have a glow rod, so I tried using, and I was able to successfully use a camping tent pole. You heard that right. So here I am measuring out the length of the tent pole. I think it was about five segments. So then from the back end, I started to break the tent pole down and inserted a couple segments in. And as I pushed further, I would extend the segments and sure enough, made it all the way through. Just had to reach in there with the arm and kind of pull it down, which you see at that point. And then from there, it's just a matter of taping on the Romex and then pulling the pole back out from the direction that you had inserted it. After removing the fan, I was able to then fish a wire from the mounting bracket all the way to the other can. Okay, finished fishing. So I got three coming into this one. One terminating there. The one behind comes here and jumps to there. And then this one has three. One of them is going to the fan. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we originally planned to tap into the, the line going to the upside down receptacle. But when we started cutting our holes and exploring with our smartphones through the cavity, we saw that the insulation was about 16 to 20 inches thick. We couldn't see any wires, and there's a decent chance that the wires are actually running uh, below our feet in the cavity below. Uh, so ultimately we decided it made sense to tap into the power using the ceiling fan, the, the light portion. By turning on the light switch and turning off the fan switch, we were able to identify with the multimeter that particular uh, set of wires is powering the light on the fan. So that was what we wanted to tap into. The rest are pretty straightforward. White's neutral, green's ground. And then the one that I don't tap is the one that uh, powers the spinning of the fan. So wiring each of these. Uh, there's a variety of holes that you need to make. What I've been doing so far is just using this one. And then opening this up, and you have your white, your ground, and your black, and they just push in to each one of these. Once you have the wire inside, and you get the wire stripped. You could then get the black and the black and just push it inside. When you finish installing all the rest of the, the wires in the cans, now it's time to go ahead and wire in the actual LED light to the can. Um, with this particular model, it's really simple. You just twist it right in there and you're good to go. From there it's just a matter of uh, installing it into the can and you grab these, pinch these little clips until they uh, go inside of the little receiver then uh, move this wiring out of the way, make sure it doesn't pinch or get caught anywhere and then you go ahead and do that on the other side as well and once uh, both sides are completely inside their clips then it's just as simple as pushing the actual light into its final resting spot. With the lights connected to the cans, now it's time to turn the power back on and verify that all the wiring is working and the lights come on. Now that everything's working, it's time to insert the cans into the ceiling and to finish up the job. Um, at this point, you just kind of move the little box in and start to tilt it up through the hole. Uh, it should be a pretty tight fit. If it's super loose, uh, you might actually have bigger problems, but uh, it's just a matter at this point of kind of pushing it up and slowly working its way until it, it reaches in and goes flush up to the, the drywall. And finally, place the black clip, push it up with your finger, and then tighten it by driving a screwdriver up on the lip right there. 
So this is some bonus footage showing what we went ahead and did to fix the problem with having to relocate the light. So as you can see, I took the piece that we had to cut out and have placed it up in its space. And then now I have um, some spackling paste that I plan on kind of filling in that gap. Um, I've also taken a nail and drove it into the piece of wood. Uh, right now there's a lot of pressure on that uh, wire, Romex, um, and I wanted to keep that off of the patch. The next morning I came and sanded it down a little bit and added some more to fill in that line so you wouldn't see it anymore. After a little bit more work, able to feather in the edge and get it to turn out pretty good. With the rest of the video, I wanted to go over some tips that I've learned from doing this now three different times in three different rooms. First one is if your light is ever not tight up against the drywall, uh, you might need to make an adjustment. There are a couple screws on the back end. Um, which you'll see highlighted in yellow. The one on the left is opened up wide, the other one on the right is tightened up. I ultimately needed to tighten them up like the one you see on the right for my lights to be able to go in tightly and snug up against the drywall and avoid having a shadow or a gap uh, seen under the lip of, of the baffle. Secondly is when you're adding a new wire uh, to existing wiring, you want to make sure the connectors are rated for the number of wires. Um, as you'll see in this image here, uh, a 12 gauge wire, if you're going to have four wires, you should be using a red cap. If you have two wires or less, you should use a yellow cap. And so what I've done here is ultimately replaced um, all the caps with red caps because in some locations I have three and four wires entering. Um, so again, you need to make sure you're using the right equipment for the situation third tip would be to use a laser measurement tool. So much more convenient than a tape measure in so many different ways and far more accurate and precise. And lastly, if you're installing these in an area with insulation, uh, get an IC rated can. And if it's an airtight can and you have these little adhesive backing strips, uh, definitely take the time to peel those off and cover the holes. That way air is minimized as how much is going into your attic or coming back from your attic. If you have any tips or pointers yourself, you want to leave them in the comment section, feel free to do so. Love to see any thoughts and feedback that you have. Uh, but this will conclude our installation of recessed can lighting in our upstairs loft. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe be interested in subscribing to our channel, DIY Around the Home, where we share videos on do-it-yourself fixes, appliance installation, car repairs, smart home technology, and just any other thing that happens around the home. Thanks.